Hey guys, welcome back to Bennett Farms here. Um, today we were working on the 5020, trying to get it put back together. Um, we've been having some issues with the uh, sheer weight of this thing. Um, this is casting and the transmission components and the differential components are a behemoth. Um, it is super, super heavy. This cherry picker is all it got to pick this up. We've got a floor jack underneath there helping. Um, this cherry picker is rated for 2,000 pounds, but I mean, it's it's uh, it's maxed out for sure. Um, or I should say it's a two ton, so, but it might not be. Um, but uh, we're kind of at a standstill right now. We had an issue with sliding it together. It started going good. Once we got it up to this point, um, we had to use the tractor a little bit, get it actually raised up and put on some blocks and then get it raised up here. Um, but like I said, we ran into some issues. I had to pull the PTO shaft out because this coupler um, was still on the actual PTO shaft itself um, inside the transmission. So this, you know, goes in the back here um, and gets bolted on. But like I said, this was this was slid in, and it was actually sitting sitting back in this void here. You know, this is where it comes out at, and then it connects connects to right there on the uh, clutch side of it, uh, the PTO clutch, anyways. And I didn't realize that that coupler was, I, I guess, in there. I mean, I knew it was there, but I didn't realize it would cause us an issue as we were sliding it together we were turning the pto shaft and we thought we had it lined up so we put a couple bolts in we got some started and then found out as once we got it pretty much drawn in i heard something crack and i was like hang on a minute so i started looking and i could see right down in there where the pto shaft was in there and i seen that this is all cracked and broken so that's no good I was uh, rather disappointed. I still am. I mean, it's not it's not a big deal. Uh, hopefully, I can get another one of these. Um, I mean, it's just a setback. So um, we're gonna try and get a new one tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. I think it's the fourth of May or April. So uh, fourth, yeah, fourth. Thanks. So hopefully, we can get one. Um, if not, well, then so be it. Uh, we'll have to try and get one made. Um, but I think it's just a universal coupler. My dad was helping us and my grandpa was helping us. So that's what my dad thinks. Hopefully it is. Um, I am hoping they have one, but they're probably gonna have to order it. Um, and then I'm probably going to order this gasket for here too, instead of using, I was just using, um, like gasket maker, Permatex gasket, gasket maker, whatever. I think, um, I'm just going to get, uh, an actual gasket for that because trying to get in here and line these up get these rods we forgot about these a couple of times so this one got a little uh banged up a little bit and this one same thing it got a little bent up i mean it's not bent by no means but it just it's just clumsy because of the weight i bent this line here a little bit it should be more square than what it is and it's not um i'm a little afraid to try and straighten it i mean that's about the best it's going to get right there um but yeah, so like I said, we're trying to uh, work on getting this done here. Um, it is, again, it's May 3rd right now, or I'm sorry, not May, I wish it was May, April 3rd. And we are at a standstill. Like I said, hopefully they can get us one of these and uh, we should be back in business. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and uh, either A, leave the PTO shaft, I'm gonna talk to the, the mechanic there, Leave the PTO shaft out and leave the coupler, uh, put the coupler piece onto the shaft here. And then once we get it all bolted in, sucked in and everything tightened down, then I'll slide the PTO shaft back in and rotate it till it slides into the cup, the new coupler. Um, and then go from there. Um, other than that though, they did get this rebuilt. So for you, the guys of you that haven't watched a couple of the other videos, go back and watch them of me tearing apart the 5020. Um, what ended up happening was the uh, pinion gear went out on it. I shouldn't say the pinion gear, the bearing went out. Um, I've got the old parts back here. Um, I don't know where the bearing went. I think I have it somewhere, but this is the back side of it here on what actually broke. So right there, this is, there's supposed to be like a, 
like another piece that it would be on here and then the bearing would go on top of that race right there and the bearing would sit here while it snapped it clean off uh and then when it did that the pieces got in there broke a tooth off the the ring gear um it didn't seem to damage anything else i'm hoping the pinion gear didn't look bad um, but the pinion and the ring gear need to be a match set so you can't you can't just put a new ring gear in there i was going to um but there's a big it, it, if your tolerances aren't your your wear tolerances aren't the same um you can get a lot of howling noises and you can just get a lot of issues and you can see this one was scored up pretty good i mean it's pretty much beat so and that's from that tooth being broken right there so i decided to go ahead and buy a set of that um i'm thinking i can maybe sell a few of these pieces here um, I'm thinking I can sell this plate here, this whole housing right here. Um, I'm thinking maybe, uh, maybe some of these spider gears here might be able to be sold. This might, you know, be able to go. Uh, they had to put a new bearing quill in it. Um, that bearing quill was the one that was on where the bearing was and got chewed up. So they had to order a new one of those. Um, and like, maybe like this, oh, right here is the bearing that got smashed or that got sheared off. Uh, so for you guys that didn't see it before, this is what that looked like. Uh, you can see the the actual like shaft portion here, and that's it there. So, um, but yeah, I'm thinking maybe I could sell these parts and like this here. I mean, they look okay; they're not damaged or anything. Maybe that piece there. I don't know. I'm gonna take it. I'll call Worthington Ag Parts and see if they want them. If they don't, I mean, I don't really care. I'll just throw them a scrap. I mean, that stuff's heavy. So, um, yeah. So. Like I said, they went through, I tore this apart and I took the whole casting to them. And then uh, I had them rebuild it all and go through the tolerances and everything and put that back together. Um, the bearing quill that they replaced is over here. Um, this is the new one. Um, I was a little disappointed in the way uh, John Deere handled this whole rebuild, um, uh, this, this whole rebuild in general. Um, they ended up um they ended up going ahead and spending uh a lot of money on new parts and and uh a couple of parts that i didn't have that i didn't provide them with and i told them that they were going to have to buy some bearings and like gaskets and stuff you know like the bearings for the transmission they all had to be replaced so it's got new bearings in the transmission down here you know there and there uh this got a new seal on the pump they went through that um, new bearings obviously on the inside here and there down on the bottom and then of course that pinion gear bearings you know new um so it's got new bearings in there but i had provided them with a few of the bearings and a few i provide them with the the ring gear um or the whole differential i'm sorry i provide them with that and they went through and shimmed it all up did everything um but uh like i said they didn't notify me that uh about the bearing quill being no good that was almost 300 dollars um and long story short they ended up going over budget by about a thousand dollars and so i had to discuss that with the shop manager and i told him i said hey look i said you know i understand that you probably needed to buy these parts to keep it going but why wasn't i notified um you should have called me and said hey um, we're missing these parts or this part is bad so we're gonna have to order that but the price is a little steep it's you know three hundred dollars or whatever um and so, I mean, the total bill was uh, just astronomical. So, um, but he tried getting around it by saying that the, uh, well, we were under on the, on the, the whole quote because, you know, our service hours, you know, we code you for X amount of service hours and we were only at this amount of service hours, which is like a two hour difference. And then, you know, it was just your parts that were so much. And it's like, okay, well, even if my parts were that much, why didn't you call me and notify me saying that? So it is what it is. I got it paid for, got it back, and uh, we're putting this thing back together. Um, I got to go through. I'm going to try and clean these uh, sun gears, these planetaries up on the, the drives, final drives, get them cleaned, and get this surface cleaned up here. Um, but, yeah, needless to say, I probably won't be doing business with them anymore. Um, you know, I mean, it, yeah. So, like I said um hopefully once we get that collar if i can get one tomorrow great um if i don't then i'll have to hopefully order it and they got you know they can get it within a couple of days and we'll get her back together and we'll get this old beast running again so um again thanks for watching uh today's video guys um i appreciate it um 
go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. If you guys like watching my content, that'll help uh, um, give you notifications. Also hit the bell, that'll give you notifications when I post new videos. Um, but just subscribing to the channel will also, it should pop up in your feed um, or in your subscription box. Um, also, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. The thumbs up button helps the YouTube algorithm know that you guys like watching my stuff and helps put it out there for other people to see. So I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for watching. And I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, there'll be more videos to come on 5020.